It is an absolutely beautiful evening for college football in Tucson, Arizona. We ready for Stanford and Arizona and bring on the Cats. Here we are at Arizona Stadium. Stanford against number 19, Arizona. And the third member to our broadcast team is a former Stanford great wide receiver, James Lofton. And because Troy Walters has broken all of James' old receiving records, Mr. Lofton would prefer to talk about the running game. James, what do you have for us? Well, Steve, you just love to rub it in, don't you? I think we have two great running backs tonight. Maybe a great one and a future great one. Trunk candidate, he's a legitimate great one. The fifth leading rusher in Arizona history. Here's a guy who averaged 7.3 yards per carry last year, but this year it's only 4.7. He's missing four blockers who have deserted him. They've actually gone to the NFL. Now his counterpart on the other side, Kerry Carter, he's a guy who only played one game of high school football in Ontario, Canada last year. But Tyrone Willingham knows that he's a guy who has the size, the speed, the strength, and the skill to really carry this ball club. If you want to win in the Pac-10, you can throw it, but you've got to be able to run it. Back to you guys. And that is exactly what both coaches told us before the ball game. They must run at least for 100 yards on the ground to be successful tonight. It is Stanford with a record of one and one. They beat Washington State last week 54-17 against Arizona. They are two and one. And there is the Arizona kicker, Chris Gray, number seven, kicking off to the very dangerous Troy Walters. 3,762 career all-purpose yards. He has scored three touchdowns on returns, but all three have been on punt returns. And Gray's kickoff is taken by Walters five yards deep he'll go to one knee and it is Stanford's football they won the toss they elected to receive and now they will start their offense at the 20 yard line and there is their quarterback Todd Husak he is the senior from Long Beach St. John Bosco High School he was a soccer and football star there and he has great receivers to go to we told you about Walters 23 catches well, he had 13 and 10 last year. Mike McLaughlin making his 37th consecutive start. He is the man in the middle of that offensive line. And they will start the true freshman, Kerry Carter, who James Lofton talked about, and he immediately has a four-yard gain before he is pulled down by Joe Tafoya. Arizona defensively, Joe Tafoya is outstanding as the defensive end. He will line up sometimes a tackle in this game to stuff that inside run. Marcus Bell led the conference in tackles last year with 139. And the defensive backs, Greg Payne has to have a big game because he might have to take the slot receiver, and that is Troy Walters. Walters has the speed and the savvy, Payne the size. Walters goes in motion. And they hand it off to the fullback who gets about three yards, but he will come up shy of a first down by about two and a half. And there, there is Tyrone Willingham. The team was very loose at practice yesterday, even going against number 19, Arizona. But the Cardinal have always played well here in Tucson. And now, Husak will change up. And he will drop back to throw. The blitz is on. He is looping it long, and it is incomplete. Intended for Walters, but step for step with him was Kelvin Hunter, the man who was picked on so many times last year because the All-American Chris McAllister was on the other side. Well, and Stanford had exactly what they wanted. They had a third and short, and then Husek checked off at the line of scrimmage, and the check went to Walters on a deep route. Right there, you see Husek not able to set his feet because of the pressure. So Jean Topenrud, who only punted once last week against Washington State, he now hammers it to the very talented Dennis Northcutt, who returned 180 yards, and he'll take this one from the 20. And Northcutt is out of bounds near the 30-yard line. There he is, number eight, Dennis Northcutt, the explosive wide receiver from Los Angeles Dorsey High School. His quarterback. Well, they have the two-headed quarterback monster of Keith Smith and Ortiz Jenkins, and Jenkins will get the start, number 16. He is the junior from Long Beach Jordan High School. He has talented receivers and backs to go to. 
Dennis Northcutt with 23 catches, three for touchdowns, all three against TCU two weeks ago. Nua Sabea is the offensive right tackle. He goes 6'2", 297 pounds. Honorable mention, all Pac-10 last year, and he is on the far right side. And they will run the football to Trump candidate, and Trump smashing forward. Good surge by the left side of the line, including that big tight end, Brandon Manu Maliuna. For Stanford on the defensive front line, watch for Willie Howard and Andrew Curry to smash the middle. Howard, honorable mention, all Pac-10 last year. Rial Johnson, career game last week against Washington State with four and a half sacks. And the defensive backs, big, physical, strong safety. Tim Smith, 6'4", 230, linebacker size, playing safety. It is second down and five for the Wildcats at their own 34-yard line. They'll really load up the backfield. And it's a play-action passion. Jenkins is looking deep for Northcutt. He is out there, and Dennis with the catch! Northcutt first down inside the 10-yard line. That's how Dennis Northcutt sets up the quarterback. It's a little out and up, and all of a sudden, oh, he's right by number 29, Chris Johnson, but the ball is thrown out in front of Dennis Northcutt. Number eight allows number eight, the receiver, to run out and get that ball. Just a great play that time by Arizona. Now smash mouth with a double tight end and a wing, and I believe someone, maybe the right guard, moved on the Arizona side. Now first and goal from the 13-yard line. From the shotgun, he drops the football. It scoots free, and Arizona will get it. Stanford tried to pick it up and run. If they just flopped in the football, it is theirs. Instead, Arizona second and goal from outside the 20-yard line. Second and goal from the 23. It started at the 7. A penalty, and now the big loss. So Jenkins splits three to the left, one to the right, and he dumps it underneath, and Stanford read it beautifully. Did you see how all three rushes got through and then sagged back when they realized screen? They've seen that play. Arizona, it, it's, it's a lag screen or a slip screen, whatever you want to call it. Dick Tomey, of course, the head coach at Arizona, hey, he wants to get the ball into his playmaker's hands. He's 8-1 versus Stanford. And they'll do anything to get the ball into either Northcutt's hands or Trung Candidate. Those guys can take it the distance at any moment. Arizona has the longest Pac-10 winning streak against Stanford. Six games. Candidate now on third down and goal from the 21. A little play action pass. Jenkins looking in zone. Touchdown! Brad Brennan! And it is good, and Arizona takes a 7-0 lead over the Stanford Cardinal on a 21-yard touchdown pass from Ortiz Jenkins to Brad Brennan. 21-yard touchdown catch from Jenkins. His 11th touchdown in his career had a great 97. It was really beaten up with injuries last year and only had 15 catches. But he has a big one, and there are the keys to victory. <laughs> Looked like one of them with, his, with the keys to your car. <laughs> We're in trouble after the game. Kickoff deep. Hey, let's go to our game break with Kevin Frazier. 44 yards passing. That's really surprising because the first 20 minutes was just a slugfest defensively. We have seen an offensive explosion by the Arizona Wildcats to start this one going 71 yards in the drive. This is the freshman Kerry Carter muscling his way near the 25 yard line for a gain of five. Now they play action to Kerry Carter. Husak fires right incomplete. Walters was open. Husak needed to throw earlier. Only threw for three touchdowns of his four this year last week against Washington State. They were slow in starting that game. Third and five. Arizona showing blitz. 
Then the linebacker spot drops. They do blitz inside. It is complete to Walters for a first down at the 32-yard line. Marcus Bell with the pressure coming from the middle. Let's go down to James Lofton. Well, if you saw that last play, freshman Terry Carter picked up the blitz, and during the break, his running back coach, Buzz Preston, went over exactly that. And it's interesting, class is in session on the field, but the Cardinals don't start class until next week. So he's learning on the job right now. Back to you guys. You're right, James. He only has to concentrate on football next week. Academics. And at Stanford, that's plenty. Husek with time. Knocked in the air beautifully by big number 97, J.J. Jopru. Husek in trouble. Going deep. Ball floats out there. And it is caught by Troy Walters. Two defenders on him. And how does he at 5'8 find the seam in between them? I think the only way he found the ball that time was that Husek's arm was hit as he was throwing, and the ball came out not anything resembling a spiral. See, the ball hangs in the air, and watch how Walters just puts on the brakes in front of Kelvin Hunter, and then Marcus Bell. The inside linebacker, 40 yards down the field, comes over and drops Walters. How can you not like Troy Walters' game? He is tough. Now Carter. Cuts outside. You know what? He has that field vision that I think is a God given. Well, not only that, but he's got, he ran the sweep. Uh, as well as any athlete could, of course, name the top high school athlete in Canada, 97 98, where he put up just huge numbers. In the summer, remember, because he couldn't play in the regular season because they had the teacher strike and only played one game and ran for 175 yards and two touchdowns in that one contest. Second and four after the gain of six by Kerry Carter. Husak over the middle. And the catch is made by Dave Davis, and he's got a first down inside the 10-yard line. Exactly what the Arizona coach is worried about coming in. If the Stanford passing game gets warmed up, and it gets warmed up complementing that running game, they're trying to start underneath to Dave Davis. Just an easy throw and catch, and they got a nice block out in front by Russell Stewart, the tight end. Anthony Banks comes over and drops the hammer on Davis, but not after a big game. So now Stanford on the move. First and goal inside the 10. Carter, not much there. He still finds a seam and leans forward. At least he's able to gain yardage and not lose it because it looked like they had him stopped at the 10-yard line. Second and goal, seven-yard line. Husak with pressure underneath. Incomplete. Wow. <laughs> Follow the bouncing ball. I don't know how to explain that one. Uh, other than Husek throws it into a, a, a bit of a crowded environment. Ball gets tipped once, twice. Rafael Jones almost has a shot. Durrani Pitts, number two, has a, has a second shot at it. He's not able to pull it down right here. It goes off his left hand. Marcus Bell tips it up. That was a tip drill. Someone grab it. Now let's see if Stanford tries to spread him out on third down and goal from the seven yard line. Split backs. Incomplete intended for Durrani Pitts. Mike Vaselli comes on. 24 yard field goal attempt. He hit 152 last week. It is blocked. There is a flag down, though. Hold on right here as J.J. Jopru got through to get a big paw on it, but did he get through too quickly? It is against Arizona. Cost them a blocked field goal, and it grants to Stanford a wonderful opportunity here. So they will have a second chance at the field goal this time from really extra point range 21 yards out. 
right hash mark though. Baselli, who is the special teams conference player of the week. Husak to hold. This time it is perfect and Stanford is on the board. They cut Arizona's lead to 7 3 with six and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. Kicking off for the Stanford Cardinal. He just booted a 21 yard field goal. Arizona with a 7 to 3 lead. Scooter Sprott, who is a starting linebacker, is also returning kicks. He's a former great running back. Bobby Wade, number 21, the true freshman who was Arizona's high school player of the year, right behind him. This is Wade from the goal line. Wow, right at the 19 yard line. Stanford was really hurt badly by special teams last year, but this year they played pretty well. Straight up just, and but Chris, even though he caught him up and caught him and he got injured on that play, I've never seen nobody explosive. He's so fast, you know what I'm saying? He, he, was, he could turn the game over, he's like a dentist. You know what I'm saying? He can get the ball, he's gone. You know what I'm saying? He can shatter the game for you, you know what I'm saying? He's a great player, man. There is no question about that because Chris McAllister, first round pick of the Baltimore Ravens, now in the NFL, and Troy Walters caught a 67 yard pass against him last year and then hurt his ankle and was really sidelined for about five games. But he is going to fly past Darren Nelson for the all time Pac 10 record sometime probably in October, the way he catches the football. Uh, 223 is the magic number to pass another. Stanford Cardinal, but you'd see who Deshaun Pope compared him to? Dennis Northcutt, of course. <laughs> Northcutt, this time with the catch, and Dennis gets the first down to the 35 yard line. Shark Walters are very similar, similar players. Trung Candidate cuts back inside, but he is stuck by Stanford. No, guys, I'm not about to start my rap career, but Willie Howard, number 77, he wears this. He says it is for the trench dog mentality. They had eight sacks last week against Washington State, and they need to get the dogs barking to stop the Wildcats right now. I think, it goes, I think it goes with the suit, James. It looks fantastic on you, but you know what? With James Lofton, it's not much to make him look bad. Here is Jenkins throwing to Northcutt and Dennis. You see that speed. You know what they told us last year that he may not be the fastest player in the team, but he is the quickest in the box. We saw that explosiveness right there. Third and one. They run the middle and a huge hole opens up for the true freshman Lance Briggs from Sacramento Elk Grove. Tank Williams on the tackle. Guards on that one and he snapped Tank Williams head back. Now on the 48, Ortiz Jenkins always a threat to run, particularly in this shotgun. He will dump it off. And the catch is made past the 50-yard line as Leo Mills, the backup running back. So they get Candidate back in the game. Manu Mali Una, the 280-pound tight end, goes in motion. And they will run that way. Candidate, first down near the 40-yard line. That contest. This is Candidate. Oh, what a hit by Tank Williams. Now you know they, why they call him Tank. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you got a name like Tank Williams, you got to have one hit a game like that. That'll remind everyone hey, this guy's a great player, but watch the cut right here. Trunk Candidate, he got so many of his yards a year ago on cutbacks, but boy, he didn't expect that jarring tackle by number 13 coming up from his. Safety position did a great job pursuing back to the ball that time, and Williams delivers the knockout. Straightened up Tank Williams, a quarterback free safety at Bay High School in Mississippi. From the shotgun, Jenkins will run. Huge hole opens up, and he dives for the first down at the 30 yard line. It might be a pass, but with this group, Dino Babers right over there calling the plays from the press box. and. What's interesting is they got two sets of great legs with, of course, Jenkins and Keith Smith. On first down, Ortiz all kinds of time. And now it is picked off by Tim Smith. That is his 11th career interception. 
And Jenkins with all kinds of time. That is his fault. Well, Tim Smith, of course, is an ex-quarterback himself, and he knows how to read a quarterback's eyes. He's playing back in center field right here, and watch him. He gets actually turned around, but all of a sudden, oh, I actually circled the wrong, the wrong player. Smith was playing on the opposite side. He was playing really a spy underneath, just came back underneath and read the play and made the pick. But there were three white jerseys in the vicinity of that football. Now Kerry Carter breaks one tackle. He's to the 30-yard line. And Kerry Carter has a first down for Stanford. That time Jeff Kronshagen threw him a great block. Running behind that big left tackle, Kronshagen. And it's a nice block out in front by Casey Moore, too. And I had a question as to, I haven't seen Carter be able to turn on his Jets yet. So he has a junior in high school, 15 touchdowns in seven games. Of course, as Steve alluded to earlier, only one game his senior season due to a teacher strike. Now Husak back to throw incomplete. Husak, I'm sure, will settle down and find some receivers underneath. Second and ten. He does find a receiver underneath, and it is to Ronnie Pitts. Redshirt junior from Saginaw, Michigan, who caught 74 passes last year for 1,012 yards. Greg Payne on the tackle. Well, he knows one thing. He's going to get man-to-man -man coverage a lot with Arizona. And again, a short drop, not holding the ball long. He's able to get it and spin it out there. And, of course, to Ronnie Pitts, the leading receiver from 98 with over 1,000 yards receiving. That made him 12th in the nation a year ago. Now from the 44. Husek, plenty of time, going deep. Troy Walters, he has beaten him again. Deep first and goal five-yard line. 39 yards in the catch. Well, D Bill Dietrich, the offensive coordinator for Stanford, knows he has, I don't want to say a mismatch, but you have a senior player out there working against a young Anthony Banks who's new to the program. And I'll, well, I tell you, if you see a lot of this tonight, Arizona has some mixed bag of tricks they can do on defense, but right there, Troy Walters again burning that Stanford the Arizona secondary. Three catches for 80 yards. And flags everywhere. Carter will get it. Not much there. Great read by the interior of the defensive line, led by Marcus Bell, the senior from St. John, Arizona. Walters to the left side, to Ronnie Pitts to the right. No flags. Husek underneath, now a flag does go. It was in the defensive backfield. And Troy said he was held. That will make it a first and goal. Now Stanford coming right down the field after the Tim Smith interception. They will run. Kerry Carter, big hole, touchdown! His third of his collegiate career, and he gives Stanford their first lead of the ball game. Boy, what a great play right here. Zach Quach at number 60 pulls around and gets a hat on Marcus Bell. And then the free safety, Rafael Jones, not able to wrap up big number 28 as he runs over him into the end zone. Six for the Cardinal. And the point after touchdown is good. Stanford now with a 10-7 lead on the number 19 team in the nation. The His coach, Tyrone Willingham, calls Gary Carter the real deal. He just went five yards for the score. Stanford in front, 10 to 7. Now Bobby Wade. Twice now he's been met right at the 20 yard line, and Stanford just rugby styles him with the scrum to the floor. Almost beaten by San Diego State. Here it's Pac 10 going against Pac 10. And right now, Stanford leading the 19th rated team in the nation. The reverse to Dennis Northcutt. He has the sideline and has the first down. 
Stanford with a 10-7 lead. Let's check out our national car rental game summary. Arizona with a 71-yard drive in their first possession. Brennan on third and goal from the 21. Catches the touchdown. Carter with a five-yard touchdown run after a Tim Smith interception. Cusack has been sharp. Jenkins was perfect, six for six, and then was picked by Smith. And Stanford took it the distance. There's the cool zone. And I am always in the cool zone because I'm next to Tom Ramsey. I wish we had one of those up in the box here. <laughs> I just feed off you. Yeah. <laughs> Ortiz Jenkins dumping it off. Tron Canada. Not much. Frank never really could get their offense going. Now Ortiz Jenkins on second and 11. Play action. All kinds of pressure. And down he goes at the 10-yard line. Real Johnson, who had four and a half sacks last week. Real Johnson, of course, was named the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week a week ago for that effort against Washington State. He comes off the corner. This is a monster sack. This is not a five or a 10-yard. This is a 23-yard sack. Ortiz Jenkins almost out of the grass that time, but Real Johnson, who Stanford defensive coordinator, Kent Bear just loves because he says, you know something? Nothing bothers Real Johnson. Nothing. Well, they give it to Leo Mills. And Mills shoots past the 10 yard line and the crowd howling. You know, it's third down and a monster. They don't want to make a mistake. The Stanford so strong offensively, but Kent Bear has to be very pleased with the way his defense has uh, started this game. He expected Arizona to pound the football, and then they come out throwing on this possession. Hey, don't be fooled. Kent Bear has a lot of experience against Arizona. He's been in the Pac-10 an awfully long time, one of the longest tenured coaches in the Pac-10. Of course, he used to be right up the road at Arizona State. Now Chris Pallack to Troy Walters. Walters, fair catch, 45-yard line. Stanford, great field position with a 10-7 lead here in Tucson, Arizona. For a running back since Mike Mitchell left. Now he's got Kerry Carter, the true freshman, and he likes him. When you think about Kerry Carter, you break out in a big smile right off the bat. Uh, Kerry is an impressive young man, first of all. Uh, Kerry roughly stands, I think, 6'2", about 235 pounds, has excellent uh, ability. And the thing that you look for in a great runner is the ability, one, to make people miss, but also to, to play the game with a certain ease to it. And there is Kerry Carter now getting a break on the sideline. But you were standing with Tyrone Willingham yesterday, <laughs> and he had a big smile on his face when he was talking with you about Kerry Carter. And what was your question? He sure did. I just looked over at uh, Coach Willingham. I said, early and often? He said, oh, yes, early and often. <laughs> and we have seen him early and often, and he has a five-yard touchdown run. It is second down and five. Big back, Coy Wires in the game. Husak play action to the end zone. Broken up beautifully by Anthony Banks. The injured Leland Gales, who is out with a shoulder injury, their starting cornerback. Somebody moved five yards. It'll be third down. Husak changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Arizona showing blitz. They rush six. Cusack downfield, she goes. He's got it again, Troy Walters. We got to go back to that Deshaun Pope bite where he's got to tell his teammates, hey, fellas, just cover number five. Boy, you talk about two players that are right on the same page. Todd Husack delivering the ball early and on time. So far out in front. Great anticipation that time. And Walters, boy, look at him. He has a guy draped all over him. Still comes down with the ball. It's a nice finish. Cusack swan. There's six completions now. Four to Walters. Now Coy Wires is ridden down at the four-yard line. But a big key. And, of course, Davis had a big game against these guys a year ago. Coy Wire to the one-yard line. And Holiday Bowl victory. Third and goal. Kerry Carter at the line. He did not get in. Marcus Bell was there to stuff him. 
Cusack to sneak it. He's in. Touchdown. I like that call. I mean, they load up heavy in the backfield. They've got the eye. H back on the right side. It looks like it's going to Carter. Cusack snap through the old Bart Snar right over Jerry Kramer. Touchdown. Cusack who also had a TD a week ago versus Washington State. Gets over again, and this is just pushing the pile right here. As a quarterback, you just want to keep your pads low. You don't want to get drilled by those linebackers coming up over the top. Now Buscelli for a 17 to 7 lead, and he has it. It is Stanford by 10 over the number 19 team in the nation. We come to you from Arizona Stadium. Todd Husak has been sharp. He's been throwing that football to Troy Walters, and Walters with four catches, 118 yards. Todd now will take a break. Kerry Carter is the true freshman from Canada who has scored a touchdown in this game. It really been hard for Arizona to stop. Scooter Sprott is number six. Dennis Northcutt, number eight. The return men for the Wildcats. Northcutt is Mr. Dynamite. Returned one 80 yards for a touchdown, a punt return last week, and a victory over Middle Tennessee. Dennis, of course, battling Troy Walters to see who's the best wide receiver in the Pac-10 conference. Right now, Troy has the edge, but Dennis has done his, done his part as well. And the football falls off, and there's absolutely no win tonight. He started the evening with a temperature of 81 degrees. Beginning to cool off. There was a slight breeze from the north, about five miles an hour. And, and Baselli does have a very strong leg, and with the thin air, I tell you, he can really drive it at this stadium. How about that drive? Man, that looked like wood. <laughs> Troy Walters has just been terrific in this football game. Four catches, 118 yards. Well, right there, he came back on a throw that was underthrown to him. And again, taken off right on top of Anthony Banks. And this was the last play that got him down prior to their touchdown. Just a great throw and catch that time. Walters ends with a nice little dive. Yeah. Already over the century mark. Early in the game. He now has 14, or excuse me, 17 catches this year. For almost 300 yards. Jenkins stays in at quarterback. No, it's Keith Smith. Keith Smith now will start here in the second quarter. And he goes right downfield, and it's intercepted. Smith's second pick of the game. Down to the 21. Boy, do you think Kent Bear, the defensive coordinator for Stanford, has watched a lot of this Arizona film and knows some of their tendencies. Throwing early on first down was Keith Smith, and Dick Tomey just doesn't want his troops to get down right here. Trying to find the big tight end, Brandon Manu Maliuna. Keith Smith. Again, the ex quarterback converted to free safety. Making a great play. 12 in his career. Led the Pac 10 a year ago. Now Carter. 15, 10, first and goal at the eight-yard line. Well, if you're Stanford and offensive coordinator, Bill Dietrich, one of the things you want to do is continue to use Bill Dietrich's over here, bringing up the plays for Tyrone Willingham, the offensive coordinator. And I asked Bill, I said, hey, what's the optimal you know, run pass balance? And he goes, Rams, I want to be right down the middle, 50-50 at the end of the night. Carter, huge hole, his second touchdown. I don't know, I might lean a little more towards runs if, if I were Bill Dietrich. Is this unbelievable? Dick tomey has been saying, you know what, we might be overrated. We lost a lot of really good people, and they did. Chris McAllister, the entire offensive line. But this is nothing like the Arizona Desert Swarm defense. No, it's not, but what, what has to happen for a defense, if you want to make tackles, you got to put hat on hat and cut off all the angles. And right now, Rich Ellerson's defense 
unable to slow down Stanford. And again, turnovers are playing a huge key tonight. Baselli with the point after touchdown, but don't go away. You might remember Texas Christian, Arizona, came from way back in that game to win. Baselli hit it through and out of the end zone in his last kickoff. And he hammers this one towards the corner, and it goes out of bounds. A fine field position when they start their offense. Let's go down to James Lofton. Guys, we talked about the freshman, a guy who hasn't even started class yet. He's made a huge impact on this ball game. Tyrone Willingham knows that he has the size, the speed, the strength. He wanted to give him the ball a little bit at a time as the season's opened up. But hey, he is the guy who's carrying this team, of course, along with the wide receiver, Troy Walters. Back to you guys. James, 10 carries, 58 yards, two touchdowns, and he has shown great field vision. And when they get one arm on him, that's not bringing him down. Well, I'll tell you what, for a guy his size, he has a nice burst, too. He could scoot into that end zone. Keith Smith now changing up at the line of scrimmage. Trun candidate in the backfield will run to the right side. Not much there. Flag goes down. The candidate, a guy who averaged more than seven yards per carry, it's a different offensive line this year as they are missing some tremendous players. Yusuf Scott, who's an offensive guard, Edwin Militalo. And I know you were talking about Mike Lucky, their big tight end, and Paul Shields, a fullback. Candidate has not broken off any long runs this year. His longest run is 20 yards. He, of course, is the son of uh, the great linebacker Frank Manumaliuna. Spent a lot of time uh, with Frank. And professionally, he had, of course, a great career at San Jose State as well. Three wide left side, Smith floats it out. North cut right there. Walters and Northcutt have been the spotlight stories in the game, but you see the score. Walters with the 24-7 edge on Dennis. What's interesting, this ball hangs up a little bit, too. Keith Smith gets it out early, and, and that's why Northcutt is able to make the play. If, or Tim Smith drags him down. The, the anticipation between quarterback and receiver doing a great job tonight. Four catches, 100 yards for Dennis Northcutt. Play action. Smith just slings it side on to Manu Maliuna. And he is tackled by Mark Stockbauer. The pocket nice to play again. Final score of that game was 56-55. Candidate. He's got a big hole that time. And he had Manu Maliuna out in front of him along with McCall Freitas, who goes 6'4", 301. A nice job tonight, number 77, Willie Howard, and Andrew Curry, 99, pushing guys around. Smith back to the air. Manu Maliuna! The big guy who goes 282 pounds, but he wants to be a tight end. You, you know, as James Lofton and I were standing there last night, we were watching the players on the field, and he turned to me, James said, you know, they, they don't look that big. And I said, well, Manu Malinuna is about 280. <laughs> and he goes, wow. <laughs> and he can run, too. I'm telling you, he gets down the field right there. He outruns Mark Stockbauer in the ball, perfectly placed by Keith Smith. Big first down for Arizona. His dad played at UCLA when Dick Tomey was there. And there's Brandon. Good year. Candidate, big hole to the five. To the three. Stockbauer and Steen on the tackle. Team touchdowns. They don't have Kelvin. He graduated. So it's got to be other guys like Lance Briggs, a true freshman. He can just make yards. Heavy load backfield. Double tight end. Fullback. Nope. Jim Wendler. Comes up short. They had already blown the whistles. Yeah. Take a look. Nothing budges on that Stanford side of the line. They are just wrapped up right there. Windler keeps fighting, but the whistles blew. Windler eventually gets over the line, but the whistles have blown. Okay. Convert them, and right here is old coaches say this is pay dirt. They leap 
the middle. Did he get in? No! Lance Briggs got it right to the goal line, but could not get the full football across. And Tyrone Willingham says defense. Shark is staying the middle linebacker, 6'1", 245. He just stuck his helmet right to Briggs. Well, I'll tell you what Tyrone Willingham said to me right before the game tonight. He said, Rams, defenses win games. And you have to have great play from your interior people. They just, they make a huge pile. Look at the guy underneath there, Willie Howard, number 77. You talk about a run stopper. I think Lofton referred to him as a, I forget, he had a big chain, a trench yard, a trench yard dog. Right now it's Curry and Howard who have been doing the road grading. Quarterback sneak, Fusak is stopped at the one yard line, maybe a gain of a foot and a half. And there's big Willie Howard at 6'4", He still throws the shot and discus for the Stanford track team. They're doing the offseason as well as play a little spring football. Dave Tipton down there, the defensive line coach, patting him on the shoulder saying, hey, great job pushing that pile. 5.55 and counting, remaining in the first half. Kent there has to be so proud of the way his team has bounced back from getting thrashed at Texas. Cusack, play action, dumps it off to his fullback, and Casey Moore with the short game. Might have stories about Ben Davidson, <laughs> Hewitt Dixon, and all those other ugly, nasty Raiders. Third down, Cusack. He's there again. Troy Walters, third down, gets him out of deep. In Arizona's backyard. Boy, the third down connection. Husack to Walters. Driving Dick Tomey nuts right now. Watch Walters. Does a great job getting off the line of scrimmage. Greg Payne trying to lock up with him, but he's stride for stride. A great thrown ball. Well placed. Troy Walters had a step on him. He's now at 140 yards, and Payne was in the chase position. How did... Texas beat this team 69-17 two weeks ago. Kerry Carter. Not much. Backyard this year. Arizona went to Penn State. Stanford went down to Austin. Of course, they both got bushwhacked, but next year, the reverse is true. Oregon went to Michigan State. UCLA went to Ohio State. Washington went to Brigham Young. Greg Payne on the tackle. It'll be third down and a passing situation. There's Willie Howard. They're checking his neck. And Willie Howard was certainly instrumental in that goal line stand. Well, you saw Stanford stack it up. Of course, Howard was at the bottom of that pile. He's getting worked on a little bit. Third and seven. 50% converting third down. Well, how do you cover the guy? Six <laughs> catches over 150 yards. He has just been remarkable. Anthony Banks has been burnt time and again, and he is the young man, just a sophomore, first year in the program, having to replace Leland Gale, who is his starting cornerback. Well, and I'll tell you how good Walters is. Watch where he goes to get the first down because he knows exactly where the chains are. He sits down, he knows, comes back to the quarterback, Gives Husack a nice target to throw to under control. He's pointing. He said, hey, I got the first down. Well, that's a good receiver. Makes a quarterback real happy, I'll tell you that. Well, Husack's been good in this first half. Nine for 16 for 197 yards. There is a timeout on the field. 329 to play. First half, all Cardinal early. See him say, hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> They want to see their football team come back right now. It is Todd Husek going back to the air, going deep. This time he's got Dave Davis. And Davis trying to run away from Kelvin Hunter. And Hunter finally wraps him up inside the 25-yard line. But Husek can't play much better. He is now 10 of 17 for over 200 yards. And you know, 
they have spread them out with those three great wide receivers. Yeah, they've gone to Walters most of the time, but the Ronnie Pitts has a big first down catch. Now Dave Davis with a big first down catch. Well, and a year ago versus Arizona, Dave Davis had a big game. He had eight catches for 127 yards. So let's not forget, I know we've put a lot of emphasis on Troy Walters, and he is all over the field, but they have a couple other dangerous weapons. A lot to talk about for Arizona to halftime, and now Kerry Carter tries the middle, gains one. That is all to the 21-yard line. Keone Frazier on the tackle, a 6-1 sophomore from Hawaii. The state of Hawaii. From the 21, second and nine, Husek back to the air, back to Walters. How does he get so open? Seven catches now for over 150 yards, and we still have 220 to play first half. Boy, he can beat you from the outside. He can beat you from the inside. This time working out of the slot, he just puts a move on number 45, Antonio Pierce, who's really that plays that rover cover back position. He's been schooling some fellas tonight. Boy, boy. He's fun to watch. Seven catches, 23 yard average. Look at that. His, the joy he has in the game of football. I mean, his dad, Trent, is the outside linebacker coach for the Minnesota Vikings. He has been raised in the game. Husek in the air, incomplete. Looking for Russell Stewart. I'm, at, I'm anxious to head to Eugene. I bet you Paul Hack is already watching film. Look at this. Stanford goes right up the middle, and Kerry Carter with his third touchdown of this football game. And, and listen to the crowd. They're stunned. Well, they cannot believe what is taking place. A 99-yard drive. Boy, and so is that man right there, Dick Tomey. He's stunned as well because when a team takes it 99 on you, they control the clock. They're grinding away. They've converted their third downs, and then they just punch it right up the middle on your defense. Well, it's been Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde in the first two weeks for the Stanford Cardinal. They were Mr. Hyde against Texas. Baselli misses the extra point, so it is 30 to 7 Stanford. But Kerry Carter with three touchdowns. Dr. Jekyll came out last week, and I'm not sure who's come out today. It's Dr. Scholes because this guy has been running <laughs> with his feet, and they have been quite healthy. Again, point of attack. Watch the fullback. Gets a nice block. Casey Moore, number 33, and he stays with his block. He finishes it all the way through the end zone. He drives his man Pierce into the zone, and Kerry Carter just following the nice block. The Buick scoring drive, 11 plays, 99 yards, 410 off the clock. Stanford TVs each of their last four drives. It has been domination. I mean, Stanford has those cool zone fans blowing. They got some cool air over there. I think smoke may be coming out of Dick Tomey's ears at halftime. But remember, they came back on TCU, a very good football team just two weeks ago. Northcutt finds a hole. Makes his way out to the 28-yard line and is cut down there. Stan Boy, you see how Stanford, that's how they started that 99-yard drive by stopping him on fourth down. There's a big third down catch right there by Troy Walters, keeping the drive alive, and then Carter over for the score. Having a big night tonight, the young freshman. He's that fan blowing the cool air right on top of number 28. Kerry Carter, touchdown in his first game, in his second game, and now three in his third game, five for the year. Keith Smith floating it up there, Brad Brennan, who has their only score of the game with a first down with 1.55 to go. Based on momentum, and right now Stanford has had all the momentum in the first half. Arizona desperately needs a score before the end of the half. Smith looking downfield, now he will scramble and throw. Kennedy can't hold on but Steen may have gotten a hand on it. Smith now on second and 10, 141 remaining first half. Stanford by 23. Two wide right, one left. Blitz comes on, Smith trying to escape. He'll just throw it away, and it is almost intercepted. Blitz on again, that is Rial Johnson. 
Smith looking downfield. Intercepted. Tim Smith, his third of the first half. I mean, the Stanford record for interceptions in a game is Bobby Grayson, four for Washington against Washington back in 1934. And Tim already has three. And, and you asked me a moment ago how dangerous it is to throw in the middle of the field. Well, guess what? If number 10 is camped out in the middle of the field, he's going to be making the plays. This is a big play right here because this is a look at our last play. Keith Smith tries to throw it late down the middle, and Smith jumps right in front of Matamaliuna, there for his third pick of the game. There have been some upsets today. Wisconsin lost at Cincinnati 17 to 12. The number nine Badgers going down. Now over the middle, and that pass is almost intercepted with 122 to go by Rafael Jones. One other was rather shocking as Louisiana Tech beat Alabama at Alabama 29-28. Tim Rattay must have been on target. Oh, well, and we get to see Tim Rattay later in the year. They come, they come out and play USC. One day after Thanksgiving. Right after Thanksgiving. And the illegal shift on the offense. Five-yard penalty previous spot. Repeat first down. First half against Arizona. And now Husak will continue to throw. Downfield, he throws to Durrani Pitts, and it will come up well shy of a first down by about four yards to the 38-yard line. Well, you gotta like the aggressiveness of Stanford right now. Minute left on the clock. They're running their two-minute drill, trying to get as many plays as possible. Just underneath. This time it may have been Tafiti Uso, it is, and Uso is the redshirt sophomore from Honolulu who comes in a lot of times in their four wide receiver sets, and he's in there now. Husak dumping it right. Uh, uh, somebody moved too early because they killed the play. That would have been the seventh catch by Troy Walters in the first half. First half. Does it start on the offense? Five yard penalty previous spot. Repeat third down. And I beg your pardon, he already has seven catches. Big play number five. What is he? Five eight barely. Delightful young man out of College Station, Texas. I don't know how he got away from Texas AM, but he wanted to go to the Cardinal. Recruited by Bill Walsh. to wind down inside 27 seconds remaining as Coy Wire went to the middle and that may be the final play of the first half it has all been Stanford and they have dominated now time is taken by Arizona with 23 seconds left they want a couple of more shots but they let four seconds five seconds tick off the clock before they called well, age out of Austin Powers he said we're coming back yeah baby <laughs> Northcutt, will they kick it to him? He returned one 80 yards for a score last week. He is so dangerous. This is only the third punt of the game for both teams. They hang it up. Northcutt will watch it go out of bounds, and the spot will be at the 23 yard line. To number 10, Tim Smith of Stanford. In, uh, won't be surprised if they just like to keep it on the ground. I'd be surprised if they throw it down the field. It looks like they're lined up to do. Just a four-man rush by the Cardinal. Then they throw it out, and it is incomplete near the 38-yard line with just 10 seconds remaining. Howard and Curry up front. They're doing a great job stuffing the run. Now they will run Tron Candidate, and Tron moves it up near the 30-yard line. That will be the final play of the first half. And Dick Toman and all of the Arizona Wildcat fans absolutely stunned by the play of their football team and the brilliance of Stanford. 30 to 7 at the half. Cardinal leading the number 19 Wildcats in Tucson. It has been a tremendous first half for Stanford. They know they have another 30 minutes to play, and their momentum may have been shut down at the break. Arizona, you know, went into the locker room and they were scolded by their head coach, Dick Toman. Here's Dennis Northcutt. He has done his job. 
four catches in the game for 100 yards. And now he'll bring the kickoff and go to one knee. And Arizona will start their offense at the 20 yard line. Let's go to Dennis Northcutt, four catches, 100 yards. He's wide to the left side. They will run from Candidate. And Candidate scoots through. This is what he does best. Heels. Ortiz Jenkins to the end zone. Dennis Northcutt. Him to 17 points on two plays. A 73 yard run by Trunk Kennedy. And then OJ Jenkins to Dennis Northcutt. A 30 to 7 deficit. And now Arizona will kick off. Chris Gray hits it deep. Goal line. Walters finds an opening and finally cut down at the 24 yard line. But he squirted it through from the 15 to the 24. Let's go down to James. Last year he averaged 52 yards on his 15 touchdowns. Just incredible numbers. Just breaking free. We remember his incredible 288 yard performance against Arizona State in the Pac-10 finale. Shredded him. Walter shredded him. Gary Carter shredded him. Can they stop him? Now second and ten play action. Not much pressure. They throw it to their fullback. And it's Casey Moore for a very short gain. It'll be third down and passing situation. Really allow Husack an opportunity to make something happen. They have a cluster of receivers down on the bottom and Arizona's still having trouble finding who's uncovered. Husak this time with pressure. They throw underneath. And is it intercepted? No indication from the referees. Now they finally say it's incomplete. But it was a good four seconds after the play ended before the side judge came in. And Hunter thought he had the pick. Rather like you make the call. Arizona though holds Northcutt fair catch Ooh, 31 yard line Brinches now Ortiz Jenkins with 69 yards to go Candidate he pulls his way for about four yards near the 35 yard line have to buckle down of course, Arizona now has to be a little more creative calling plays. I really believe they have to spread the field a little bit more and throw some, take some shots down the field. Play action. Jenkins scrambling. He is in trouble. He is sacked. Back inside the 30-yard line. It'll be third and long stock by our game of Blitzen. And number 90 hauled him down. A kid from Baton Rouge Catholic High School in Louisiana somehow got away from LSU. And Willie Howard came in from Mountain View, California to Combine the hit. There's Kent Bear. He's got a lot of friends in the conference, doesn't he? He sure does. He's been, uh, of course, he was with Bruce Snyder for a long time at Cal and then at Arizona State. Had some great defenses at Arizona State and then came on board with Tyrone Willingham and has, has one of the longest tenures in the uh, Pac 10 for an assistant coach. Stanford four man rush. Jenkins will swing it out left and it is dropped by his running back, Leon Callen. Chris Pallack, first punt, went for 35 yards on the season, almost 41. There's lightning in a bottle, and Troy Walters. And they angle it away from a very nice kick by Chris Pallack. Walters escapes to the 20. Walters escapes to the 30, and he's down at the 32-yard line. Time out on the field, 11.33 to play, third quarter. Stanford by 16 over Arizona. might be coming back his way. This is Terry Carter. He is muscled up and dropped quickly by Joe Tafoya. Boy, Joe Tafoya put a hit on him too. Boy, that's them in the first half. High formation tight end right. 
Busek looking left. Dave Davis with the catch, and Davis eludes one, and he has the first down at midfield. Uh, they're going to get one of the Stanford offensive linemen for throwing an elbow late right around the pile. Dave Davis, pretty shifty guy as well. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. Kelly, 15 yards to the left. Oh, and Tyrone Millingham hates that because he does not like his team to beat themselves. He said the opponent is tough enough, but don't make mistakes like that. And right now, he is arguing with the official. He's getting the explanation. Now he understands. Well, right at the end, you're going to see Zach Quachi throws, uh, throws a little forearm, but he but he holds on to Deshaun Pogue, so he figured he probably wouldn't get away with it, but then that flag came, uh, came into the picture. You think that's a no call? Uh, I can see why he threw the flag. You don't want that activity around the pile. Stanford now from their 35 yard line. They do have a first down though, and they'll run the football again across that 35 near the 39 yard line. Again, Joe Tafoya on the tackle with James Lewis. Backup defensive tackle is Kerry Carter. Second and six. Play action. Cusack deep. Incomplete. Let's go to the college football. According to the Associated Press. Pac-10 trying to crack the top 10. Incomplete fourth down as they try to hit a wide receiver. The slot. Let's see if Colpenwood hits it to Northcutt and gives him a chance for return. He really sends this one towards the sideline, and it goes out of bounds. Well, that's a great kick. No return, and it's almost like kicking it out of bounds at the five-yard line when Northcutt doesn't get a chance to return it. Boston College, meantime, beat Navy today. Wisconsin and Ron Dane, he breaks the Big Ten career rushing record, but the Badgers lose by five, and Air Force beats Washington in Seattle. But the Rick Neuheisel era starting 0 and 2. There's also a shocker going on up in Tempe. Arizona State is losing 28 to nothing to New Mexico State in the third quarter. Yeah. Will 6 and 5 win it this year? Let's <laughs> hope. You bet. The blitz is on, and down goes Ortiz Jenkins. I say that because every week. You have a different upset. You have Arizona State, who really looked sharp uh, last week. New Mexico State is pounding them 28 0. Teams are off the top, especially with all the all the defensive schemes you have. And right here, here's a here's a corner blitz. Frank Primus from his cornerback position comes off the corner. That man right there, Kent Bear, leading the sack attack. And usually it's Wildcats. the Desert Swarm defense is applying the pressure to quarterbacks, but not tonight. It's been Stanford. Well, see, now what you can do if you're Stanford, you sit back and you play some zone. First down, though, for Arizona. They're going again to the tight end, Brandon Manu, Manu Maliuna, and he's having one of the best games in his career. Pretty good for a 280-pound tight end. He can scoop from the 40. Jenkins on the option candidate very fortunate to catch that football and he did it with one hand Second and 14 passing situation they will run left this is Leon Callen Callen to the 45 midfield first down Back to Leon Callen and he finds a seam and Leon inside the Stanford 45 yard line where Sharkis Steen finally brings him down. Well, years ago, the Trump candidate really won it by default when Callen went out with a serious knee injury. Now play action. Jenkins in trouble. And he is dropped at the 46 yard line. So it'll be a loss back to the 46 as Austin Lee brings him down. James, after allowing 178 rushing versus Texas, Stanford held Washington State to just 65. And they have done a good job today. Now it is Jenkins 
and Jenkins will not get the first down on third down. I guess they were trying to surprise Tim Smith on the tackle. Yeah, they, 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 they thought they saw a weakness in that Stanford defense on third down, but what they didn't take into account was that Stanford was blitzing on a third and long, and a great call that time by Kent Baer. He brought Tank Williams right up the middle on a safety blitz and confused all Arizona's blocking schemes, and Stanford able to shut him down on third down. Now fourth down, and Pallet comes on to punt. Walters at the 10. Alex is trying to get it inside. And Walters, with the fair catch, juggles it, but makes the catch at the 10-yard line. Stanford really has played error-free football. No picks, no turnovers. Beautiful look at the University of Arizona campus here in Tucson, Arizona. Rather stunning sight with Stanford with a 16-point lead. Cardinal with the football after stopping Arizona's offensive drive. Now they throw to Troy Walters. He gets a three-yard gain. Let's go to the... <laughs> Tony Samuel doing an unbelievable job with New Mexico State. I didn't know they had that kind of defense. I didn't know they had that kind of offense. Here's Kerry Carter, and Carter comes up about three yards shy of a first down. The Pac-10 record in non-conference games this year, 12 and 10. Last year, it was 25 and 12. The conference did lose a lot of great quarterbacks and a lot of good specialty guys on defense. A guy like Chris McAllister, who Arizona lost, was huge. I mean, he would shut down the entire side of the offense yeah, what are the opponent? The, the Pac-10 does send a lot of guys on to the next level to the NFL, but hey, tonight almost picked off. Kelvin Hunter had it in his arms, but it is three and out for the Cardinal. We have seen a lot of games on a national perspective swinging the opposite favor. I, I, I believe, though, some of these teams that go on the road and go on the road early, as Arizona did at Penn State, then they went down to TCU and, and barely got out of there, but they're being pressed tonight by Stanford. It's just playing on the road gets awfully tough. You just have to wind up your concentration level. And what was it? Arizona is the only member of the top 50 to have played on the road their first two games this year and at Penn State and at TCU. That's Catching up with 333 and 115 on the ground. They need to continue to put the ball up the field, though, and get another score. Three wide to the left, and they are in single coverage. Tank Williams now will drop back. Jenkins looking deep, now will scramble. And Ortiz Jenkins is cut down after maybe a four or five yard game up near midfield. The attack was made by Mark Stockbauer and Matt Friedrichs. Ortiz Jenkins, watch as you get a good look at Dennis Northcutt down the field. He found a bit, bit of a zone. He doesn't realize his quarterback, the duress he's under. And Stanford's doing a nice job of spying some defenders and not allowing those Arizona quarterbacks to hurt him with the run. Second and six. Stanford showing blitz from Real Johnson, and here he comes. Jenkins flips it out. He's got the first down to Bobby Wade, and Wade with the catch. He is run out of bounds after a first down grab. A true freshman Bobby Wade, the Arizona High School Player of the Year, and he is Arizona's first signee since 1957 as Player of the Year. Who is it? Ed Wilson, quarterback. Earlier this spring, fine young quarterback, but his older brother obviously leading a big upset today, Louisiana Tech over Alabama. So it's just been some incredible games today. Here's Trunk Candidate. Not much there. He bends forward for about three yards past the 35-yard line. Two and a half minutes remaining, and baseball Thursday. Second and six here for Arizona. Candidate, lone setback. They throw it wide to Bobby Wade, and Wade trying to escape the one man who has him, and he leans forward to the 30-yard line. They'll mark him out of bounds in between the 29 and 30. Reuben Carter on the coverage. 
Reuben Carter had that pick last week against Washington State that he brought back for a 60 plus yard touchdown. Wade with his second catch. Well, if you're Arizona here, you know, third and third and a long two is now the time to play action. You could. I think you got to keep it on the ground and get the first down. He'll throw. He has his man north cut. Dennis to the 20. Dennis still on his feet to the 15. Player out of Dorsey High School in Los Angeles. 121 yards tonight receiving. And Northcutt will go wide to the right side with two others. Candidate lone run back on the left side. Time is called as Arizona trying to come back. I mean, look at Ortiz. He's absolutely exhausted because he's scrambling. He's running. He's having to throw. And right now, he'll have a chance to get a break. Time out of the field. Left defensive end. Again, three receivers to the right side, and they throw it out to Northcutt. He'll reverse his field. He's got a seam. Northcutt will score. Boy, he's got some jets off to the races. Arizona elected to go for two here as well. They're trying to pull themselves to within eight points. That would give them a touchdown two-point conversion to tie. Timeout on the field. One minute remaining in the third quarter. On this drive, it was north cut for 15 yards and the score. Now they'll go for two. Jenkins, he wants to run it himself, and Jenkins will score. Arizona has the momentum and will take a timeout. The Wildcats within eight. It was Walters in the first half. It has been Northcutt in the second half. Arizona with an eight. And here is the kickoff. Walters will let it go out of bounds, and Stanford will have very good field position to start their offensive drive. They have the eight-point lead. Somehow they've got to get the momentum back. And now Todd Husak will remain in his quarterback. They said we would see Joe Borchard in this game, but Husak has been so sharp. Although, offensively, they have been three and out on their two possessions in this half. Well, we did see one of their other quarterbacks, Randy Fasani, Lined up in wide receiver. Of course, Randy's their third quarterback and a stellar quarterback in his own right. One of the top recruits come out of high school a couple years ago. And Todd, Todd Husak, Todd Husak has to do one thing here, Steve. It's A to B. Simple throw, simple catch, and they also got to move the ball on the ground a little bit. They line up Walters in the backfield. They look Troy's way. Then they go downfield deep. And it is over the head of the intended receiver, Dave Davis. Good coverage by Kelvin Hunter. You, you have to admire Stanford taking some shots deep, but I also think you need positive yards on first down against this Arizona defense. The numbers on Husak tonight, very good. 16 to 29, closing in on 300 yards, keeping the ball away from defenders. But I think this is the opportunity now. You, you have to really make the safe throw. Listen to this crowd shouting U of A. On second and 10, Durrani Pitts near a first down. The mark will be important. Greg Payne on the tackle. I was going to say, go high percentage. Of course, who does that steer you to? Troy Walters or Durrani Pitts or Dave Davis? 10 yard pass complete and the ball is the 45 yard line. First and 10. Three compared, or combined, excuse me, for almost 180 catches last year. And Husak, he threw over, for, over 3,000 yards a year ago. Well, he had that 450 a Stanford record in one game against Oregon, Oregon State. Now play action, he's in trouble, dumps it off, incomplete, second and 10, as it was intended for Emory Brock. Well, on second and ten, he's gone to his slot receivers. 
And you see the yardage total by half. Stanford's been held to 43 in the second half, and Arizona has 171, and they have scored twice, and Stanford has not scored. And offensive line waiting. Second and ten. Somebody jumped, and I'm not sure if the guard moved or if Arizona moved. Stanford making it that much more difficult, too. Keone Frazier came through very quickly, though. Dead ball, offside, on the defense. Five yard penalty, still second down. Well, if you don't gain anything on first down, but if you can draw them off sides on second, net same result not, not bad for Stanford a second and five again if I was Stanford you're going to have to run the ball a little bit to control the clock Walters goes in motion they pitch it though to Kerry Carter and Kerry Carter is stuck after a short game he'll come up about three yards shy of the first down and you saw Stanford Glover come up from his outside linebacking position Plays that whip linebacker behind Deshaun Polk. Right now he's giving Polk a little bit of a break. And that is the end of the third quarter. Both teams hold their four fingers saying we got to put him away in the fourth quarter or come back. Okay. Third and four. I'm sorry. Arizona has rallied from a 30 to 7 deficit to cut it to eight points at 30 to 22. Steve Fiziak along with Tom Ramsey and right now the Cardinal facing an important third and four. Cardinal facing a lot of noise in the stadium too. Just what Dick Tomey wanted. The crowd definitely back into this ball game and the momentum back in Arizona's favor. What do you think they might do here? It's third and four. Walters goes in motion. Husek dumping off inside to Ronnie Pitts. First down to Ronnie Pitts inside Arizona territory. Well, what do you do on third down? You run a high percentage play again. Husek delivering the ball underneath. Nice safe throw to Ronnie Pitts. Watch him move some people out of the way, too. They get some nice blocks. Mike McLaughlin, the center downfield. Able to spring Pitts even further. Great play dialed up that time by Bill Dietrich, the offensive coordinator of Stanford. So the Cardinal with a huge play, and they have it at the 24-yard line. Now coming out of the game, Mike McLaughlin, who suffered an ankle injury just two weeks ago, played last week in the victory of Washington State. And now he is in pain again. So Zach Watcher may move over to the center from left guard. He does, number 60. Could be critical. Dusak will run Kerry Carter. He cuts back and carries inside the 20 yard line. Let's go to the college football Saturday. On the Cardinal, holding. Boy, you know, a moment ago the crowd got into it. All right, Tom, let's check out our national car rental game summary. Stanford, 30 straight points in the first half, but Arizona goes 15 straight in the third quarter. Carter, three touchdowns. Smith, three interceptions. Walters, he's been incredible. So is Northcutt, particularly in the third quarter. Cusack back, all kinds of time. And a wide open Dave Davis inside the 20 yard line. It will be second and about three yards to go. Anthony Banks making the tackle. Uh, Dave Davis lines up. He's in. He's in the slot here. He's going to run up and run a corner. Husek's been on target all night long. What happened? They stacked those receivers. Watch Davis come out of it from underneath. Again, the ball is perfectly thrown. Great spot, close to a first down. Now second and three. Carry Carter is the eye back. Carter will get it. Big hole. Carter first down to the 11 yard line. The tackle is made by big number 55, Mike Robertson. Interesting. Kerry Carter's got great vision as well. Watch the plays designed to go this way. But once the play starts, watch where he goes. We'll slow it down right here. See this big crease right here, and he hits the hole. 
perfectly that time. Carter's doing a great job. He starts one way, and I tell you, all the great runners have cut back ability. Carter's adding on to his yardage tonight. Nice average along with three TDs. Now first down. Carter inside the 10. There's Joe Tafoya. That's the first time tonight where he looked a little like Teddy Bruschi. <laughs> Joe Tafoya. Boy, Teddy Bruschi, of course, a great defensive end here at the University of Arizona, playing now with the New England Patriots, but he's able to fight off his blocker and then put a hat on to Carter. And boy, Carter just packed such a wallop, 235 pounds. Bruschi. All-American, 92 and 90 through 95. He was part of that Desert Swarm defense. They've got to do that right now against Stanford. Husek, too much time. He throws. Touchdown, Dave Davis. Todd's first of the game. He has over 300 yards passing. And Davis, now one of 17 catches by the three Stanford wide receivers. Dave Davis able to push off Anthony Banks. And again, it's quarterback and receiver relationship timing right there. Just a nice route run. Husek knows right where he's going to be. The ball delivered on time and in the right place. I think the Arizona cornerbacks are going to walk home with their legs wobbly tonight. They have been turned inside out by the Stanford wide receivers. And now Stanford, it is no good. Arizona still within striking distance. 12.49 to go. Todd Husek goes 10 yards into the end zone to his man, Dave Davis. Stanford has a 14-point lead, but missing that extra point might be important. If they scored now, and just kicked the extra point, they're within seven. Missing two extra points is big during any ball game, and Tyrone Willingham, trust me, he's doing some quick math in his head, and I know Dick Tomey is too. Arizona, the more plays you can run, and they'll they'll try and get some quick quick strikes, especially when they get the ball this time, and they have the personnel to do it. Baselli kicked two through the end zone in the first half. This one hammered deep. North cut a yard deep. Here comes Dennis. Big hole. Out to the 32 yard line. Let's go down to James Lofton on his favorite subject. Guys, Dick Tomey knew that his secondary would have trouble with the Stanford receivers. He just didn't imagine that they would have this much trouble with them. You know, you knew Troy Walters was going to get his catches. He's only had one in the second half. The other guys, Durrani Pitts, Dave Davis, they've come on strong between the three of them. 17 receptions, over 20 yards per catch. It's causing headaches for Dick Tomey right now. That's our partner, James Lofton. He still holds one Stanford record for most touchdown catches in a season 12 in 1977. Troy Walters is chasing that this year. He has not scored, but he has eight great catches in this contest. Now Jenkins back to the air, almost picked off. Austin Lee, redshirt sophomore from Post Falls, Idaho. Austin Lee just does a good job getting by his man who tried to slip him, and then he gets his arm out. Once again, Arizona trying to go to number eight, Dennis Northcutt. Big guy, 6'6", 260 pounds. He came to Stanford as a tight end. Jenkins in the shotgun. Candidate right next to him. Blitz on. Jenkins rolls away from it. Throws downfield, and it is incomplete. He had Northcutt at the 45-yard line. Third down, 10 yards to go. Boy, Stanford putting a lot of pressure on Ortiz Jenkins right here. He's trying to wave him to go deep, but Northcutt knows he's got enough for the first down. The ball comes late. Drops it. Tim Smith comes over and almost makes another play. That is a big miss. Now it is third and ten. A look back on that. It would have been a first down with about three yards to spare. Jenkins right up to the line of scrimmage. Dropping straight back. And he wings it to the right side. Incomplete intended for Bobby Wade. Fourth down and ten. 
And that will give the Cardinal the football back with 12 minutes and 24 seconds remaining. And remember, Dick Tomey's known to change up the program sometimes on kicking downs. I have to say it'll be a fake, but I guarantee you the Stanford return team is fully aware of what the capabilities are. Chris Pallack is going to run to the right side and then punt it. And Walters will fair catch it at the 25-yard line. Well, it works. Pallack out of bounds. Thank you, Kevin. And here in the desert, it is Stanford with the lead, 36-22. And the Cardinal with the football. Let's see if they put it on the ground and try and work that clock. They will. And they run inside to Brian Allen, his first carry of the game. And he muscles it out to the 30-yard line. Steve Fiziok, Tom Ramsey with you at Arizona Stadium in Tucson. The number 19-rated Wildcats have been stunned by Stanford. It was 30 to 7 though at the half and then Dennis Northcutt caught two touchdown passes to cut it to 30 22 and then Cusack went to Dave Davis in the corner of the end zone to make it 36 22 still not comfortable with just inside 12 to go. Blitz on Cusack reads it and he will get the first down to Durrani Pitts. That is what makes Todd Cusack special. He decodes the defense he read the blitz he knew who the hot receiver was and the young quarterback won't do that exactly more importantly Steve he, he stays patient in the pocket he knows what the defense is doing too and he knows when he's when he's got a hot to have to throw quick and he knows when he has protection and Husak just doing a remarkable job again for the Stanford Cardinal just delivering the ball to a host of great receivers. The blitz on again, this time sneaking through. Every Brock fumbles the football, but he covers it up himself. Nick Tomey thought he got a break. Good gain, though, by Emery Brock as he gains eight. It will be second down and two. Boy, in every head coach, you want your defense to create plays and turnovers, and you see where the ball spilled out. And Brock was able to recover his own fumble, but of course Stanford in the first half, Tim Smith, three interceptions for the Cardinal. Dick Tomey just hoping he could make something happen on defense. Arizona is minus three in the turnover battle of this football game, and now Brian Allen just slamming through, keeping that clock winding down inside 10.50 to go. Well, this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the University of Arizona and the Pac-10 Conference and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of the University of Arizona and the Pac-10 Conference. Well, Arizona just keeps clanging the chains along the... I'm sorry, Stanford keeps clanging the chains along the sideline. First down after first down, that means they're controlling the clock and the score. 19 first downs for the Cardinal. And another big run, and look who's busting through. It is Casey Moore, their fastest fullback. He's gone. Well, I tell you, they've been, Arizona was blitzing a lot. All of a sudden, they're caught in a blitz Casey Moore running hard of course he started at fullback tonight 6'2 235 pounds sophomore out of Florida just hit the ground running he only had two career carries before tonight and he has his first career touchdown on a 49 yard run now Baselli pushes it through and Stanford's beginning to run away they are back in front by 21 points with 10 20 to play Unbelievable. Watch how he just explodes through the line again. Hat on hat, number 55, Robertson out of position. Pad level was a little high, and Casey Moore just ran right by him and able to keep his head of steam all the way into the end zone for the score. You know, we saw that kind of tackling against Penn State. 
And now watch the defensive end will come up and what Moore's going to do is just hit it right away. And again, good blocking at the point of attack. Boy, he just slips right in. And Moore, that's kind of flashes of the old, you know, Tom Rathman. Yeah, just slug out the middle. Yeah, the blockers break the big holes open and Casey use your speed Boy, that's some of that's technique and some of that's just flat out playing hard right there Casey Moore showing great effort that's what happens you go full speed you make a lot of good things happen now the kickoff by the Cardinal as they have scored 43 tonight coming off their biggest win in three years after a 37 point win over Washington State they scored 54 last week a yard deep Dennis Northcutt and again the desert swarm defense has been the Cardinal tonight particularly on special teams Tyrone Willingham I think Willingham his keys has been you know a roller coaster season when you look at the loss to Texas I think you have to throw that out of the window the team that we've seen the last two weeks has been anything but like the team everybody saw in Austin. Well, you know, I guarantee you what every head coach in America is looking at are his conference games. Those are the ones that count. Of course, you want to go out and win every game, be competitive in every game. They just hit a landslide down in Austin. Jenkins stays in. Stanford blitzing. OJ runs away from it and somebody was holding. Jenkins will go deep. And it is knocked down by Chris Johnson, but this is coming back. There was a Arizona Wildcat holding on the play. Tyrone, he's not a big day today. I was uh, kidding him before the game. Of course, he's a Michigan State grad, and uh, Michigan State put a put a beating on Notre Dame today. Notre Dame coming out of the uh, shoot at one and three. And my favorite player of all time, <laughs> Otis Taylor. Number 89. 43 22 here. Stanford with the lead. 10 minutes to go. Jenkins. Not much. Manu Maliuna is just given a shot at the 19 yard line, but they still need to get to the 29 yard line for a first down. You know, my, my flashes of that old time football was Hank Stram mic'd on the sideline. Oh, line. wasn't that hilarious? 26 touch power trap. 26 touch power trap. What I tell you? <laughs> and then Mike Garrett took it in for the touchdown. Yeah, of course Didn't it was. Didn't I tell you? Score. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Second down. Ten yards to go. Jenkins looping it long. Is that Melosi Leonard incomplete? No, it was Marvin Brown. Marvin Brown for the first time. He had three catches in their last game against Middle Tennessee State University for 34 yards. Marvin Brown is an awfully quick player. He lined up in the slot that that time and ran a corner at the ball, perfectly thrown by Jenkins, and Brown just unable to come down with it. Shows him. Frustration on Jenkins a little bit. We haven't seen Keith Smith in the second half. Of course, he threw two picks. Those three costly interceptions. And Stanford really has not made a mistake. They have not turned the ball over. They didn't get it going early in the third quarter offensively, but after the North Cut touchdowns, it's been mighty quiet. And now they sack O.J. Jenkins. The blitz by Tim Smith and Austin Lee came from the right side. And Smith has had quite a show, three interceptions, and he was coming from the strong safety spot. And you gotta you gotta credit Kent Bear for the scheme that he threw in the Arizona offense tonight because Tim Smith, the safety, he has been all over three picks in the first half alone, and then a sack coming in tonight on top of Jenkins. That's number six on the evening for Stanford in sacks. Here's the punt. Troy Walters makes the catch, goes out of bounds at the 48 yard line. It is all Cardinal by 21 points, eight and a half minutes to, to play, and they will keep it on the ground where they were so successful the last time. Football team that went 12 and 1 last year. Their only loss was to UCLA. They beat Nebraska by three in the Hollywood Bowl. They finished ranked number four in the nation. 
But my goodness, as they started ranked fourth in the nation this year, they have been blasted by Penn State and Stanford putting a pasting to them as Stanford has scored two more points than Penn State scored in the entire game. Let's go to James Lofton. Guys, this is kind of a family affair for the Leonard brothers, but one Leonard is faring a lot better. Matt Leonard, the little brother, is a red shirt freshman. He's a defensive lineman. Melosi Leonard is his older brother. Now, I talked to Matt. He said, I just didn't want to follow in the footsteps of my little brother, but also his dad, Terry, played here for the University of Arizona, and he's a stunt man. He's a pro in Apocalypse Now, Raiders of the Lost Ark. He also was a stunt coordinator for the Fugitive. So maybe there's a one-armed man out there that could help the Wildcats right now. Well, all I can say is that Melosi Leonard would like to have a stunt double because he has seen his club embarrassed tonight by the Stanford Cardinal. I, I, I think the only thing that will help Arizona right now is a four-armed individual that can wrap up and tackle. That's what that's what Dick Tomey wants out of his troops. They just haven't tackled well in the losses that you brought up, Steve, and also against TCU when they had the scare down there in Texas. They haven't wrapped up people when they need to wrap them up. Here's Coy Wire, and he breaks free. And look at this. They just can't tackle, and Wire is all the way down into the end zone. He broke free, and Arizona just can't tackle. Where's the forearm man? Not, not meaning to hex the Wildcats at all, but just a moment ago. Speaking of wrapping up, here's Coy Wire. He breaks one, two, three, four. I mean, this is just, it's bad tackling. But I'll tell you what, you got to credit Stanford, too. They're playing hard, executing the plays that get dialed in, and that's what it's all about. Play hard and, you know, let the chips fall where they may. What Arizona wants out of their team, though, is people to play hard. And as Dick Tomey said against Penn State, he was unsure as Marcus Bell gets checked for getting nicked there. But, you know, Dick wants... Coach Tomey wants his players to play hard, give every ounce of effort, and sometimes when a defense isn't wrapping up, you got to question the effort. Yeah, he said Arizona is physical. Let's get back to that. Tackle hard, and they have not done that, particularly in this fourth quarter. They closed the 30 to 22 because of their offense, but their defense now is, has, is going to give up 50 points if, if Giselli makes this extra point. This has been incredible by the Cardinal. They scored 54 last week against Washington State. And now they have scored 50 points against a team that started the year, ranked number four in the nation, the Arizona Wildcats. Dog, too. Willie Howard is a big dog at 6'4", 290. You know, you know, as an old coach of mine once says, that, that, that dog can hunt. <laughs> And bite yeah. from the three. Bobby Wade slugged down at the 20 yard line. Let's go to the college football. 17 yard kickoff return to the 20 yard line. There'll be a lot of frowns in the desert, Mr. Frazier, because Arizona is getting pasted by Stanford 50 to 22. Trung candidate now going wide, and Trung goes out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And, Tom, I want to ask you a question. Remember what happened to Arizona State last year? They got hit hard by Washington in the first game. It was fourth down and 19 yards to go, and Brock Heward hits uh, Reggie Davis in that bomb, and it completely shattered Arizona State's dreams for a national championship. Do you think that might be happening to Dick Thomas Wildcats? Well, you know, I would agree. Sometimes during the course of a season, you get stunned by certain plays that really have an impact, an everlasting impact. Although, I don't think the Penn State game was a, a, a turning point for Arizona. I think it woke them up is what happened. But their expectations were so high. Here is Jenkins scrambling around. And now it's incomplete. I don't think the players' expectations were as high as maybe the outside media. Whereas Ortiz Jenkins said before the Penn State game, hey, I, I don't think we're, we should be rated that high. And, you know, a lot of it is a carryover from the year before. You know, Penn State, obviously one of the best teams in America right now. They went down and, and beat Miami down in Florida. 
you know, you got to give respect where respect is due. There are some teams playing awfully well. Arizona not executing tonight. Stanford on top of their game plan, offense, defense, and special teams able to package an entire game. And, you know, even though the game's not over, if you're Arizona, the only thing you can do right now is try to get some couple quick scores and possibly an onside kick or two. Well, Arizona may have come within one quarter of going undefeated last year. Their only loss was to UCLA. Arizona led late in the third quarter of that game. And they returned 15 starters this year. They won 12 games. The Cats were the only the fourth team in 83 years of the Pac-10 Conference to win 12 games in a season. And all the starters back in the 12 in one year. It's almost like they have been hit in the solar plexus and they can't catch the breath. And again, they can't tackle. And look at this, bringing it back for the Stanford Cardinal and still on his feet is Durrani Pitts and he will take it all the way. There is a flag down and it's way back at the 40 yard line, but an incredible return. And Dick Tomey is going, well, we are going to have to go back to basics. Yeah, the well, penalty will go against Stanford, but the basics are blocking and tackling. Boy, I know, and it's, you, you know, it's hard to teach, turn the tempo up on tackling. Tyrone Willingham knows he has 12, 12 men on the field. They had a bust in personnel. They didn't get their extra man off the, off the field of play. substitution on the receiving team. Five yard penalty, previous spot, results in a first down. Boy, just a shame. I'm sure Tyrone Willingham feels for, to Ronnie Pitts right there because that was an excellent return all for naught but you know you can't practice tackling during a short you know during a week because you want your guys to turn up the tempo but you don't want to hurt your own people throughout the course of the week so you got to just depend on guys to be ready physically mentally and to show up and boy the name of the game is execution and Stanford did a remarkable job tonight executing their game plan. Well, the Stanford Cardinal, they will host UCLA next week. UCLA getting a stare from Fresno State. Another flag goes down as Bobby Wade with the catch. Meantime, Arizona goes to Washington State next week, and then they've got some tough tests after that. They have to host Southern Cal and Texas El Paso. And then Oregon, and they go to UCLA. There is the Arizona remaining schedule. Washington State has played very, very poorly to start the year, and they were beaten by Idaho today. And then it is USC, UTEP, Oregon at UCLA. So they, they've got a pretty attractive home schedule. Boy, you know, in this conference, <laughs> you really got to take care of your home turf. And if you're able to do that, because going on the road at a lot of the Pac-10 schools, I mean, it is tough. It is a tough environment, as a lot of teams have found out. USC almost lost today at the Coliseum. UCLA was down 21-20 to Fresno State. Now they're beginning to pull away. For USC next week, we're up at Eugene, Oregon for the USC game. And I'll tell you, Oregon comes off a huge game versus Nevada today, 72 to 10. You know, other happenings in the Pac-10. Oregon State out of the gate at 3 and 0. First oh. time they've been 3 and 0 since the uh, what, 1970? Long, long, long time. That might have been the uh, Tommy Protro days. I gotta break out my history book. We may be heading up there to talk to Dennis Erickson, new coach at Oregon State, Mike Riley. Left him with some good players. And they are 3 and 0, leading a very talented Georgia Southern team today. Georgia Southern, the number one rated team in Division II. I'm impressed. Uh, Willie Howard has kept coming tonight, almost put a sack on Ortiz Jenkins just a moment ago. But that defense that Kent Bear is, has, has had them wound up, playing hard the whole night. There's Kent Bear. Again, one of the in fact, he may be the only coach in the Pac-10 to have been a coordinator at all three at three different schools. He was a defensive coordinator at Cal under Bruce Snyder, defensive coordinator at Arizona State under Bruce Snyder, and defensive coordinator now under Tyrone Willingham at Stanford. Show, show, show. A 
another sack, the seventh of the ball game. Sam Benner came storming in from the inside. And Stanford and Kent Bear. Wow. Four and a half minutes to go. Boy, Stanford just kept bringing the blitz, and Arizona didn't have the answer for it, unable to pick up. The blockers have just made a long night for the Arizona quarterbacks. Durrani Pitts will let it go, and it bounces inside the 20 yard line. So, a marvelous punt by the Arizona Wildcats, and it dies with 3.58 remaining. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net has been brought to you by. It is hard to play for their goal at the beginning of the year, which being a national power in the top five and trying to get to that number one ranking. They had 15 starters back from last year's 12 and one season. And two weeks after Arizona beat Nebraska in the Holiday Bowl, athletic director Jim Livengood went after a deal to play Penn State in the Pigskin Classic. Livengood said playing the Nittany Lions gives Arizona the kind of opportunity the school has never had. And after getting roasted in Happy Valley, I think athletic director Live and Good would like to play, have the pigskin people maybe come to the Valley of the Sun next time. Joe Borchard comes in as the new Stanford quarterback. <laughs> Keone Frazier on the tackle. Six rushing touchdowns for Stanford in this game. Well, I know I know the Stanford coaches walk away tonight knowing they have the ability to rush the football against what has been a very tough rush defensive team in Arizona. Although Arizona came in tonight ranked last in the conference on the in rush defense. Down will be three. What's interesting, you see the running game is key under Tyrone Willingham's leadership. 14-0. When they outrush an opponent, Stanford, big night, 216 yards to Arizona's 110. But I was saying Arizona was at the bottom of the heap in rush defense coming into tonight's game. And I asked Ty Willingham, hey, you looking at the numbers? Do the numbers mean something? He goes, well, not, not this early in the season. And I would agree. But boy, after tonight, other teams are going to be saying, hey, we might be able to get some yards. Arizona was giving up five yards a rush tonight, over six yards a rush. Let's go down to James Lofton. Well, guys, most of the time at Stanford, 79 is just a high C. Tonight, it's an A for Kerry Carter. Got his first start. And you know what? Next week, he gets to start classes. So this guy is just getting all the luck. Well, he has to play the UCLA Bruins next week. They've got a pretty good defense. Although they get some points to Fresno State. And here's the snap. It takes a Stanford bounce and will go dead just past the 50 yard line. Arizona came in two and one. After tonight, they will be two and two, and the Cardinal will move to two and one. A marvelous game by Todd Husak, over 300 yards passing, and his team rushed for over 200 yards. So more than 500 yards total offense by the Stanford football team. And this is against an Arizona defense. That was number one running the football offensively last year and number one against the rush defensively. You know, he's sitting there talking to Randy Fasani, and they're talking about the play that Husek missed Fasani on earlier. <laughs> earlier, he said, hey, if you would have put a little more air underneath that ball, you might have had a 400 yard game, pal. <laughs> How about a score for you? Two minutes, 10 seconds to play. And Jason Johnson comes in the game as the new quarterback, and he gives it to Leo Mills, and it's a short game. And didn't Husak give you some uh, trouble the other day? Because he, you were talking about him last year about being a little thin. Uh, Husak, last night I'm standing there during their walkthrough, and he said, hey, Ramsey, didn't last year you say on air that I, I was skinny or I needed to get in the weight room? And I said, I might have. I said, well, did you? He goes, yeah, and he said, look at my arms. And he still had these skinny arms. I said, wait a minute. Ah, you weren't in the weight room too much, but I tell you, he did throw the ball in the offseason. Well, look at this. They are going to give it to their head coach. And he is proud of them. And Dave Davis was the decoy over there. Here's Jason Johnson. And the catch is made near the 43-yard line. 
They're calling it incomplete. They just got tied. No, it wasn't Ty, excuse me. <laughs> I'm not sure. I've never seen them wash bucket another coach. <laughs> Third down. Is that Moe's rising? I believe it was. For the offensive guys that set it up. <laughs> well, there's time to celebrate, and for the Stanford Cardinal, as Ted Leland told us at halftime, who's the athletic director of Stanford, this is a first half when they scored 30 straight points that you just want to bottle and just sprinkle throughout the season. Now Jason Johnson downfield, and he completes the catch to Nick Fleury. The executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. The coordinating producer for College Football Saturday is Gary Garcia. Tonight's game was produced by Jerry Romano and directed by Doug Freeman. The College Football Saturday studio show was produced by Loy Maxson and directed by Joe Whitus. Director of remote operations is Debbie Kilmartin. Now first and 10 at the 13. And they're going to run that football to Leo Mills and he gets to the 10. Inside one minute to play. Stanford has 50 points. Arizona has 22. I think everybody who came to this ball park tonight is as stunned as we are. I think they I think Arizona fans definitely stunned. I think Dick Tomey and his troops stunned, but I'll tell you what. This gives Stanford, when you score over 50, as they did a week ago versus Washington State, scored 54, and then 50 again, the confidence booster it gives to Stanford as it goes into the heart of that Pac-10 schedule, it's very meaningful. You know, the offense knows they score points, and the defense plays that inspired football behind them, wanting to get that offense the ball back. And, Evidence tonight, Tim Smith with a stellar game from his safety position. Three interceptions of the Arizona quarterbacks who are known to make good decisions. They just didn't make them tonight. Dick Tomey and his coaching staff have to go back and they have to say, fellas, new goals. And there's plenty of time. Plenty of time to still rip those victories off and get into a great bowl this year. Pass thrown incomplete intended to Fleury. Well, I don't know if it's De La Hoya highlights. It might be Trinidad highlights. <laughs> well, they advertise De La Hoya. And Fox Sports News always tries to keep some suspense going, so we're not going to give it away because we don't know. <laughs> Keith Smith on the sideline. Five yard penalty, still third down. Boy, that man right there, Trunk Candidate, just didn't get enough running room tonight. Stanford's rush defense really uh, corralled him, did a nice job. There's Howard and Curry. They're going to look like they're making the move. They've got some courage. <laughs> they went up to the assistant coach first, and now they're going after the head, head guy. There's the option. Leo Mills trying to cut back. Nope, nothing's there. Stanford will take over, and the clock is winding down. It's time to celebrate for the Stanford Cardinal, and they dump it. No, they got Kent Bear that time. You know what? He doesn't care. The way his defense played tonight, I think he'll be mighty proud all week long. You know, I, I think they'll wait a couple weeks to, to get to Coach Tyrone Willingham. Well, I think the coach this yeah. time. They missed him. Now, Tyro Willingham can be so serious. Dick Tomey, who is such a wonderful coach and really has built a power here in the desert, and he's done it in uh, every single way that I, I think anyone would be proud of. Dick Tomey is the first coach in Arizona history to receive the University of Arizona Provost Award for Outstanding Accomplishment in Teaching. He is the dean of the Pac-10 Conference, and he's done a wonderful job, but his club struggled tonight. They came back to cut it to 30 to 22 and then Stanford said see you later and they just took off with a great running game that ran for six touchdowns in this game. Winning coach Tyrone Willingham and Dick Tomey. He will be scratching his head and reviewing the tapes and wondering what went wrong, but the Cardinal came in impressive. Todd Husak over 300 yards passing. 
And how about Durrani Pitts? They Boy. had Walters was special. Kerry Carter yeah. we featured in our opening was very special. Todd Husak just had a brilliant first half. Husak, Husak was able to, to spread the ball around to all his receivers, and more importantly, Stanford established their run game tonight. One thing they really wanted to do, they were able to accomplish it and execute it tonight. And they pushed the record to two and one while Arizona falls to two and two. So that's it from Tucson, Arizona, where the final score is Stanford 50, the University of Arizona 22. Please.